I've already beaten the game as Lee Harvey Oswald, so I think someone deserves to have a little revenge. JFK was the 35th President of the United States, whose assassination in 1963 spawned several theories and conspiracies. I'm here to put them all to rest. After JFK was shot in the head, he was revived by Doc Mitchell and paved his own path in the post-apocalyptic Mojave. That's why today, I'm asking the question, can he beat Fallout New Vegas as JFK? JFK owned several firearms, but by far one of the most famous was his M1 Garand. Therefore, I'm only allowed to damage enemies with this machine, a unique version of the battle rifle, which is basically the M1 Garand with the serial numbers filed off. I'm also only allowed to wear Kimball's suit and a pair of sunglasses, based on this picture of him. I can only play on very hard difficulty with hardcore mode enabled, and no companions can assist me in combat. Finally, if I get my head crippled, I fail a run. Obviously. With all that out of the way, let's begin. After being shot in the head by Bannock, I mean LHO, I name myself accordingly and choose an appearance to match. I try my best to make a close approximation of Jack and, well, it could be worse. I then choose my special stats. 6 strength for weapon handling, 6 perception for spotting enemies before they spot me, 8 endurance since I can't wear armor, 1 charisma, 7 intelligence for science skill, 9 agility for vats and gun skill, and 3 lock since this machine has a low crit multiplier. I end up tagging science for a reason you'll see later, medicine to heal through damage without armor, and guns for better use of this machine. As for traits, I go for good natured to reflect JFK's personality, or maybe not, I don't know jack about politics, and skilled because why not? I ended up changing skilled for trigger discipline after leaving Good Springs, simply because this machine has a high spread. While Doc Mitchell does give me a vault suit to wear, I feel myself lacking in presidential attire. Luckily, I find one of President Kimball's spare suits in the back of a pickup truck. How convenient. With enough drip to handle whatever the Mojave throws at me, I take a quick stop to procure some items from Doc Mitch, sell them and my DLC goodies to Chet, grab a shovel, hunt some sarsaparilla bottles, go grave robbing, talk to Ringo Starr, and go around town enlisting the people of Good Springs against the Powder Gangsters. Sunny is easy as ever, my high agility gives me the sneak skill needed to convince Trudy, Chet is still salty about me selling all my DLC items to him, Easy Pete is Easy Pete, and Doc Mitch lends me some extra supplies despite the fact that I already took all his supplies. Since I have no way to attack yet, I just use the tried and true method of sitting back and watching the chaos unfold. Surprisingly, I make it out without a scratch, and everyone in Good Springs survives, meaning it's time to go to Prim. Kinda. At my first level up, I put points into Sneak, Repair, and Medicine. I also get Science to 50, which will be very important later on. For my perk, I go with Lady Killer, for obvious reasons. JFK kinda had a thing with women. An awkward conversation with an NCR trooper later. Hey, where the hell do you think you're going? I head to the Mojave Outpost to pick up some quests, and then make my way to Nipton, where I could stop by... Just wait until I make you beat the game, see how you like it. Speaking of star bottle caps, I witness a murder and then become part of that murder when some purple haired lady chases me all the way into Nipton. The only reason I could think of is that she wants no witnesses, despite the fact that she just made a whole bunch of new witnesses by wandering into town. And no, sadly, she doesn't kill all of her Swanick, or try to kill Volpez, which would have been hilarious to watch. JFK succumbs to his weakness to women and attempts to seduce Jacqueline with a confident walk cycle. It plays out mm, badly, to say the least. Stopping by Wolfhorn Ranch, I obtain the chopper, which could be the subject of a Butcher Pete run in the future. Maybe. I trade with a traveling merchant, who then gets ambushed by the Legion as I just sit back and watch. The folks at Ranger Station Charlie put down some vipers, and I get the second piece of my outfit. Sunglasses. Drippier than ever, I head to Novak with pride and then report some bad news to Ranger Ghost for easy XP. Going back to Novak, I trade with Cliff and Pickpocket Manny for info on where I need to go next. I also remember to take some cigarette butts from my grave as evidence. On the way to Boulder City, I witness a fight between raiders and a caravan, and also between Private Kowalski and a Rad Scorpion. Meeting Mess Up gets me to level 4, where I put points into guns, speech, medicine, and lockpick. I also get the educated perk. Since I don't have enough speech to convince Fess up, I just untie the hostages and, once more, watch the chaos unfold. I even go inside the building to lure Ketchup into NCR forces and then take all their valuables for safekeeping. 
This even levels me up again, where I put points into medicine and speech. 308 ammo is fairly rare, but luckily I'm able to use my gun skill to convince Alexander to sell some to me. I knew he'd be the holy grail of this run. To finish some unfinished business, I go back to Prim and hoof it through the Bison Steve, eating bullets like candy, until I can release Deputy Beagle and give the bad news to Nash. Convincing the NCR to take over the town goes smoothly, and I even report the Nipton situation to Kilborn as a bonus. I think it's high time I had something to shoot people with. Going through the Camp McCarran terminal into the supply shack, and hacking Contreus' terminal, this is what the 50 science was for, I can download the weapons manifest, which levels me up. I put points into medicine and speech and pick toughness to make up for my lack of armor. Handing the info over to Boyd nets me this machine, a unique version of the battle rifle with better damage, crit damage, AP cost, fire rate, and spread. It also has the phrase, well this machine kills commies, etched on it, and we all know how JFK felt about commies. After helping interrogating a POW using some less than savory tactics, I'll show you gutless, you sniveling bastard. I'll spill your guts all over this room. I decide to help the NCR with their ant problem for some easy XP. And, well... Yeah, it's a pretty good gun. After saving a lady from being robbed, I convince Swank to give me back my stuff and get revenge on LHO. One in the head for one in the head sounds fair. This levels me up, where I dump all my points into medicine for helping the boomers. Vendatron is able to spare some more ammo, and I set off to help the artillery slinging xenophobes when, ugh, you're gonna have to beat the game too, George. Unfortunately, JFK somehow handles this missile crisis worse than the one in Cuba, and it takes a mix of waiting and luck to make it through. I wouldn't say unscathed, let's say very much scathed. Helping the medical patients levels me up, where I put points into speech and pick the commando perk. Listening to Pete goes as usual, and passing some skill checks nets me some extra fame with the boomers. Having 50 science comes in handy once more, as I can get the sonic emitter from Loyal and use it to exterminate the ants with ease. My next task is to raise the bomber from Lake Mead, and while I can technically obtain the rebreather, the challenge restrictions prevent me from wearing it. As it turns out, the lake lurks are no match for my trusty rifle, and the quest ends up being a piece of cake. Getting the boomers on our side levels me up again, where I put points into guns, medicine, and speech. My next task is to curb violence in Freeside, and, well, I have a plan. You see, the Van Graffs take all the weapons on your person when you enter. Key phrase, on your person. By dropping my gear on the ground, I can just come back out and equip it no problem, despite the fact that they want me to use an energy weapon and combat armor. Just don't use the weight function during this quest. Seriously. One unsuccessful suicide bombing later, Pacer comes around, I taunt him, and promptly blow his freshly greased hair off his skull. Yeah, I, uh, used an energy weapon. I also level up, putting points into speech and ranking up toughness. The Great Cons are next on the chopping block. You might be asking why JFK isn't resorting to more diplomatic methods. Let's just say that the bullet to the brain affected his emotional state severely. A bit of fiend, ant, gecko, bighorning, and mantis hunting later, I level up, getting speech to 100. Before the great cons get a hot dose of karma, I think it'd be nice to stock up on ammo. Helios 1, Prim's Sheriff Office, The Sniper's Nest, and Cottonwood Cove HQ all have boxes of 308 ammo for me to yoink. Despite using a loud as hell rifle and having little sneak skill, taking out everyone in the longhouse is a trivial affair. In fact, Papa Khan doesn't even react to me putting down Caesar's advisor right in front of him. The rest of the cons go down in a similar fashion.
and despite literally genociding them, I'm apparently a merciful thug. Okay. I also level up, increasing guns and getting the sniper perk to put LHO to shame. Since having more NCR fame, caps, and EXP can't hurt, I might as well do 3 card bounty. First is Violet, who gets a visit from the animal hospital to get her dogs put down. Next is Driver Neffy, where I'm hesitant to act as the bait, but hey, I'd do anything for a Scooby snack. Last is Cook Cook, live by the steak, die by the steak, and by the gun. In the spirit of cleaning up side quests, it's time to, as Nurbit so eloquently put it, help Jack score some Crimson Caravanessi. The quest is just a bunch of boring back and forth, and I was this close to just letting the boomers blow her to kingdom come, but I saw it through and got pretty close to leveling up. Time to deal with our favorite neighborhood crime bosses. First I level up, putting points into medicine and guns. Then it goes as usual, pickpocket Kachino, convince Troik to plant the thermite, convince Nero to kill Big Sal, and since I can't use my signature gun, I have to let Kachino and the rest of the Amertas sort Nero out. Camp Golf is my next stop, since you can find a lucky 38 VIP keycard sitting in an office there, for some reason. After turning in a snow globe, I managed to get into Mr. House's control room before Securitrons can fire a single shot. Should have invested in better security, not at home. This next part, taking care of the Brotherhood, is where our favorite spork-loving, robe-wearing Pugilus comes into play. I make sure to clear out the scorpions ahead of time so she doesn't attack anything and fail the run, she makes me hungry for fast food, I pickpocket all three key cards, and use a stealth boy to escape as the bunker self-destructs. Turns out there is a benefit to not wearing armor, you're faster and more stealthy. JFK knows a fellow president when he sees one, so it's up to me to prevent the same fate from happening to Kimball. Pickpocketing comes in handy again where I snag a detonator from a legion spy, and the rest just sorta of sorts itself out. Kind of anticlimactic, but hey, at least Kimball didn't meet the same fate he did last New Vegas video. Using the here and now perk, I get guns to 100 for the upcoming battle. The Battle of Hoover Dam is afoot and, well, JFK is going to have to put that military training to use. At this point, this machine does good damage, fires fairly quickly, has great accuracy, and using armor piercing rounds can absolutely devastate the Legion. With all my healing supplies and chems, plus boomer support, the Battle of Hoover Dam isn't too tricky. While I could just talk the legget down, I thought it'd be more fun to do this. I shall make a cape of your skin. General Oliver bursts into the scene like a Michael Bay movie, the battle is won, and I beat Fallout New Vegas as JFK. However, JFK's personal battle is far from over. 